Today, I'm going to be showing you how I created this simple quote generator web application called Play-Doh.io. I'll be going through step-by-step -step on every aspect of building this application. From scraping data off a website, taking that data and storing it inside a database, then fetching that data from the database into our Next.js 13 project, and finally deploying our project on Vercel. The tech stack for this project is Python and Google Colab for web scraping, Next.js 13.2, Upstash Redis, Tail in CSS and Vercel. Hi and welcome to this channel. My name is Hosna and I make web development videos sharing my knowledge that I gained throughout the week with you. I think as a developer sometimes it's hard coming up with different projects to work on that's not your typical to-do list or portfolio static web page. The inspiration for today's project is that I just finished reading The Republic of Plato and there are a lot of good quotes that I got from it. I love reading quotes so I thought it would be a good idea to try to create a project around that. So the first idea that came to mind was a quote generally. Generator. So let's get started. To get started, we are going to set up our project. We are going to be cloning this repository, which you could find in the description section below. We are going to go ahead and open up the terminal. We are going to copy this and make sure that we are putting it somewhere that we could find. I'm going to do a git clone and paste that in right there. After the repo is done being cloned, we are going to go ahead and open up this project in VS Code. Once we have opened our project, we are going to go ahead and open the terminal and do an npm install so we can install all of our packages once it's done installing we are going to do an npm run dev so after running that command and opening up our project in localhost, you can see that we run into an error. In a little bit, we are going to be creating a database inside Upstash Redis, and that's where we are going to get these variables from. For now, we could go ahead and create a .env file, and inside that file, we are going to be pasting the content that is inside our example.env file. So once that's pasted in, we could go ahead and stop our project. So now that our project is set up, I'm going to show you how I got the quotes data and then stored it inside this Upstash Redis database. What I did is I created a web scraper using Python and Google Colab. So I'll be showing you how I did that right now. Before we get started, I want to show you the website that I'll be scraping from. The website brainyquote.com has a bunch of different quotes that you could choose from. I'm looking specifically for quotes from Plato, so I'm going to be looking that up. And then once I've looked that up, you can see there's a bunch of different search results that show. So we are going to be scraping all the data on each of these pages. To do that, we are first going to open up Google Colab. In order to use it, you are going to have to sign into your Google account. Now, once you're logged in, we are going to be opening up the notebook that already exists inside our Visual Studio repo. We are going to go to File and Open Up Notebook. From here, we could press Upload, and we are going to choose the file, which is located right here. Now that we have our file open, I'll be walking you through the code on how we scrape the data from this website. So at the top, we are importing a few libraries. I went ahead and ran this cell, so now we are able to reference those objects. We are going to be using beautiful soup to scrape our data. Underneath that cell, you can see there's a couple other functions that were made. How these functions work is we have some input parameters right here. I have the URL of the website, which I got from the top right here. Then at the end of the URL, you can see there's a query parameter that's used to indicate what page it's on. So if we go to the first page, you can see there isn't any query parameters for the first page, but then for the other pages, there are page two, page three, page page four. So we are going to need to use this in order to go through the pages. So we are going to be inputting those inputs into our function get quotes. So when we run this cell, then it referenced this function right here, get quotes. We have our inputs, URL and query. We have a data variable, which is an empty array, which we are going to be storing our quotes in. We are using requests library that we imported at the top to get our information. Then we are passing the content of that page into beautiful soup. And then on line five, we are figuring out how many pages we have. And to do that, we could use the inspect inside Google Chrome. You could see when we highlight over a specific div, we can see what we are looking for is so what line five is doing is I'm getting all the items that are a list that have a class of page item so if we were to print out pages then it will give us the values inside each one of these squares which is previous one two three four five six and next the only value that I'm interested in is the second to last value which is six and I 
I want to convert that into an integer. So now that I know how many pages we have, I am going to use a for loop to go through each page and scrape the data. So that's when this get page function comes in handy. And we can find that up top right here. We have an output variable, which is an empty array currently. We're checking if the page is not equal to one, which I described earlier when it's one and we don't have that query parameter at the end. So that's the only case where we would be using a different type of URL. And then on line six, that's where we find all of our quotes. If we go back to the inspect page and we hover over these list items, if we keep going inside and we have this div right here with an ID of QBC1, and if we go inside each one of these divs, we can see that the data is stored inside this div. And then we can see that the style is equal to this. So we are looking for all the divs that have this attribute style. If we look at the other ones, they have a similar pattern. As you can see, it's the same style. So results will return a list of div items. You want to only grab the text from each item and strip it so we only have the quote and no white spaces. So that's what we're doing on line nine. And then on line 10, we are appending our quote to our output array. So get page will return an array of quotes. So if we go back to line nine on the get quotes function, the result of get page is being stored inside items. Like I said, items is going to be an array. We are going to be appending each one of the item inside items to our data array. So then our final quotes output would be one gigantic array of quotes. So I'm going to go ahead and run all of these cells to show you what the output should look like. I have this commented, I'll uncomment this. And then once I run this cell, we see that we have an array of quotes. So I'm gonna go comment this back up so we can have a clear area. Now that we have scraped our data, we are going to need to store our data inside Upstash Redis. And to do so, it's really simple. We are going to go to the Upstash website and log in. If you don't have an account already, you could create one. So I'm going to log into my account right now. Once we're logged in, make sure that you are on the Redis tab. I'm going to then go to create database. I'm going to name it Play-Doh.io-DB and put my region as North California. So that's the region that I'm closest to and press create. So it says that the database is being prepared. And once it is, this is our database. So to connect our database, I am going to use Python because we are currently running it in Python. You can see in our notebook, we already have this section. However, we need the host, the port and the password as well. So I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to remove these bottom two lines. Don't worry, I'm going to be changing this after this video, but this is how it should look. Then in your collab file, we have to pip install Redis. So we are going to be doing that. And then once we have, then we are able to import our Redis library. Before running the cell, I want to show you what it looks like before running it. So if we go to data browser, this is where we could go to see what's inside our database. So currently I have no data. And after running this, I should have some data be put inside the database. Where that's happening is on line 9 and 10. I'm going through the quotes variable, which was instantiated right here on in this cell. For each loop, I am referencing my Redis database and creating a set and adding that quote to this set right here that I named Plato. So if I refresh the page right now, my data should show up and I have a set named Plato and then I could reference that later in my next JS project. Now this is one way of doing it. I'm sure there are multiple different ways to do it. If you want to look into the different capabilities that Upstash Redis has, you can go to their documentation and in their documentation, it tells you the different API compatibilities. So for the one that we just used, we use this one, the S add. So after running this cell, we are done with our Google collab. We were able to successfully import our data into Upstash Redis's database. So now we could go ahead and implement this into our project. Now going back to our project, in order to connect our database, we need to add these items. To find them, we could go to the details tab. If you go down a little bit, you could see in the REST API area that there's a .env and we could go ahead and copy this into our env file. Once copied, this is what it should look like. And then from that end, we are done connecting our database to our project. If we go ahead and run npm dev and reload our local host, 
you can see that the website is now showing. So after cloning the project, the only thing left is to add these variables into our .env file. I am now going to go ahead and explain how this web application was built. As mentioned in the beginning of this video, I use Next.js 13, specifically 13.2, which is its newest version as well as Tailwind CSS for styling. The major components are going to be inside the components and app folder. This is a single page application. In the layout file, you can see that I have set where our globals.css file is, have imported navbar and footer. This is what the navbar code looks like. You can see that I'm importing the GitHub icon from React icons. I have a header tag that wraps around the rest of the divs. I'm making sure that our navbar is absolute so it's stuck to the top, that the width is full, that it's starting at the top zero position, that there's a border underneath the navbar, and that the background is white. The next div inside is for sizing purposes and responsivity. And the div inside that is more for styling and padding. Now the items in our navbar is between line 10 and 29. I have a GitHub icon and I have a link that's wrapped around that whenever you click it, it takes you to that GitHub page as well as the logo and the logo name. These items are wrapped around a div. This justify between allows there to be space th between the items, making sure that everything is centered and justified in the centered. This space X3 gives the space between the logo and the logo name. And that is mostly the high level of the styling for the nav bar. Now here's the code for the footer. You can see here that I am using a flex and a flex column reverse. And then when it's in a medium size, I want everything to be in a row and there to be a justify between. And here's the responsivity of it. You can see right now it's in a column, but as I increase the size of the screen, it becomes a row. So that's some of the styling there. And then you could see within the sentence here, I am creating some tags around them that whenever you click it, it takes you to that reference. And yes, that is the high level of the footer. Now, if we go back to our layout page, you could see that I am using metadata from Next. This is one of the new features of Next.js 13.2. This is how you name the top of your browser. So that's how I name the top of the browser. And then within the body, this is where I have put the nav bar and the footer. If I comment this out, you could see that the nav bar goes away. But if I put it back in, the nav bar shows up again. Now the last thing that is left is our page, which is where the quotes are being shown. So here is where I'm fetching the data from the Upstash Redis database. I am importing the Redis client from the Upstash Redis library. And then here is where I'm instantiating the client. It is using our .env file and calling our URL and token from there. And then on line eight is how we are referencing our database. I am using SRAN member to select a random value from our set that we created. So this is selecting a random quote from the set that we created called Plato. And then this is how the site was designed. I have a main tag. I am making sure that our screen is filled by using an H screen and placing the items in the center. And then I am setting the background to this SVG here. I found this at this website, Hero Patterns. And you just download the SVG right here and put it into your project. So I have the SVG inside this public folder right here. To change the opacity, I just added this right here, fill opacity, and if I wanted to change the fill color, I could, but I liked it the way it was. Then if we go back to our page, this is how everything else is set up. I'm making sure that everything is in a flex column, so that's how these items are on top of each other. And then depending on the size, the text shrinks, if I make it small, it, make, it gets bigger, if I make the screen bigger. And then our quote is being shown right here, which is being referenced. So this is a high level of this page. And then that's how this project was made. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to deploy this project on Vercel. To do so, make sure that this project is already in your GitHub or you fork this project on your GitHub account. We are going to go to the Vercel website. Once we're here, we are going to log in. If you don't have have an account go ahead and create one I'm going to log in with my github account once logged in you are going to go to add new project you are going to select the repository that you want to import so for us it's play-doh.io now before deploying our web application we have to make sure to include our environmental variables so if we go back to our project and we go inside our .env file this is where we are going to include our environmental variables without this step the web application will not work 
So make sure you do this. We are going to copy in our first variable. We're going to add that as well as this variable right here and paste it inside. Now, once we have added our environmental variables, then we could go ahead and deploy our project. So our project has successfully deployed. If you want to go check it out now, you can go to our project and press visit. So you have successfully deployed this project. If you want to customize the domain, you could go to settings and select domain. Make sure that you have a domain that's already purchased purchase and just configure whatever you need to configure for it to work with Vercel. So that's it for this project. If we go ahead and refresh, you could see that our quote has changed. And that's because every single time we are refreshing, we are fetching another random quote. Something to keep in mind, the really cool thing about Upstash Redis is that you could see how much it's being used. Each time you are refreshing the page, you are sending a request. So you could see how many requests you are sending. If you want to see what else the free tier offers, you could go into the details tab and go to subscription and see what you are allowed. If you want to upgrade your plan, if you have more requests, you can go ahead and do that. But for now, I am sticking with the free tier. So that's it for this project. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, go check out some of my other videos as well as if you have any questions, you can leave it in the comment section below. Until next time.